Greetings everyone. Today I have a curious question for you and that is, can you feel your brain? Usually when I ask this question to people, the reply is a silent one and a look of baffled confusion because of course for most people, uh, they're not able to feel their brain. And I'd like to detail a little bit about why this is the case. So it has to do with the sort of energy sources that you are integrating into your body on a daily basis. So for most people, this is solids, liquids, and gas, and that's as far as they take it. The only issue with this, if we remain on these what are called material energy sources, that it only stimulates and organizes the lower energy centers within our energy circulatory system, our non-physical anatomy that guides and regulates energy within our body. So we're really only appealing in that case to one aspect of ourself, the physical aspect, whereas there is obviously another side to us that is the non-physical aspect to us. And to put this for an example really clearly is that you can of course touch and feel your physical body and the things around you, the material environment, this is very tangible for us, but yet we are not able to touch, to show or, or tangibly demonstrate, we could say, our feelings. This is not something physical that we can show. Likewise, when we are communicating with others, this is not a physical thing. Even so now, as you are listening to this communication from me, it is only occurring because of a sound wave that is being transmitted from me into the camera and to you through your device. So that's a non-physical thing. And if we are to really look at the significance of this aspect of us, this non-physical aspect, it is the foundation upon which all other experiences arise because how important is it that you're able to communicate how you feel? How important is it that you are able to communicate your thoughts, your ideas, your reasoning, your perspective on things? It is critical and fundamental to every interaction that we have, uh, whether it be our personal relationships with our partners, our family, communications, our friendships, or business transactions occurring in our professional life, they all require us to be able to express not only how we feel, but also how we think, our rationale. And our ability to do that is dependent upon the functionality of the energy centers that regulate those non-physical processes. So this is really, really simple. We just have a step grading system in our energy circulatory system that organizes energy on various levels. And so the lower energy centers organize the physical, the fluid, and the gaseous environment within our body. These are all energetic layers within our, uh, our body and that our mind utilizes for our experience in the world. And so then we have to move beyond gas to a non-physical energy source such as light and vibration that are obviously part of us but people aren't so aware that this is the case. I mean I just provided an example of how vibration is obviously a part of us simply because that's the way that we communicate. It's creating vibrational tones within the voice box and that is actually regulated through the energy center through here. This is your, called your throat chakra, or your throat energy center. And so if you wanted to convey how you feel about something, then that would be to integrate your heart energy center, which looks after how you truly feel. Also your head energy centers, which looks after the way that your mind is operating. And you would need to be able to combine those two things and equalize and bring them together into a comprehensive audible transmission that we would refer to as sincere communication, right? And so how important is this to us in our personal relationships? We need to explain how we feel and how many times can you relate that you have wanted to express how you have felt, but that you haven't been able to bring that into words. You haven't been able to find the words, whether that be because you wanted to say something really nice, such as, I love you, I appreciate you, 
I am sorry for the pain I have put you through. Some of these things we find difficult to express. And in addition to that, on the other side of things, we could say if we're frustrated and upset and there's an anger or resentment building within us because of what's going on in our personal dynamic and we want to express that, often we're not able to do that clearly and uh, efficiently and it builds up as a pressure within us and then that comes bursting out as an array of fragmented uh, blames, complaints and projections onto those around us and we know how how that works out in our life don't we it results in conflict argument and ultimately it results in separation and the unfortunate thing about that is that our original intent our motive if we like was really being driven most of the time from a desire to feel more connected with those people around us this is really why we get upset because we experience separation with people. We start to perceive them as the opposition and we start to compete with each other about who's right, who's wrong and the blame dynamic begins and it's really all a confusion and uh, disturbance that is arising out of a deeper desire and that is to connect more deeply with each other. So if we're not able to do this, you can see how this really is the basis through which conflict arises and as we know when we're not able to communicate effectively and we're conflicted about things this is when we start to attack blame and move further away from each other and as we know that's not the fulfilling aspect of the relationship that's the unfulfilling aspect of our interaction that's the part that causes us to feel pain that causes us to feel suffering and ultimately we are unfulfilled by this. So you can see all of this that I've been discussing, I'm just talking about the non-physical aspects of who we are. And we have this limited instrument called a physical body that we must utilize to try and communicate that and try and express that non-physicality of who we are into the world. And so the skill that we have to do that predominantly determines how successful we will be in our personal life, in our family, in our friendships and in our professional life. So it's extremely essential that we learn to utilize our system, our body and be able to direct our mind through it in the most effective way. And so part of doing that will of course involve regenerating our energetic system getting the heart energy center operating, the throat energy center operating, the energy centers in the head and even outside of the body that give us what we could say extrasensory perception. Uh, someone for example that has an extrasensory perception is, is simply someone that's very empathetic. They are able to tune into how somebody else feels and really comprehend and and feel how they're feeling. So that's an extra sensory perception because it moves outside of the boundary of our own individual body and into somebody else's body and mind and their own personal experience. So you can imagine how important it is that we all have this extra sensory capacity so that we can really comprehend each other, understand each other and have a more closely connected experience through which we can all achieve a lot more and feel a lot more fulfilled. So if if that makes sense to you and you're resonating to what I'm saying and, and also agree that this is an important thing for us to develop, then I invite you to uh, take a look at the comments section below. There might be an option there that can help you. Also uh, be sure to like our Facebook page, uh, sign up to our YouTube channels. These are the ways in which we're going to be sharing more and more about how you can regenerate your system and stop operating just out of those lower energy centers which only represent your physical, your emotional and your mental self. If you can start to regenerate and bring your energy up rising into those higher energy centers, the, the heart, the throat and the head energy centers, what you'll find is that not only you have a lot more energy, but you find to make a lot more sense out of the world. It starts to become more comprehensible to us when our system is regenerated because we start to have an enlarged view and this takes me back to my original question of are you able to feel your brain 
And the reason that most people can't feel it, of course, is because they're just using their material energy sources. Once you begin to utilize the non-physical energy sources of light and vibration, what you'll find is that there is so much more to your life and to what's going on in the world that was not previously visible to you. And that is because the brain is starting to regenerate and eventually that energy will be like a natural flow that just merges with you. You can begin to breathe this energy form in and it will begin to penetrate your brain up through the, uh, the midbrain and moving into the cerebellum out into the cerebral cortex and the frontal lobe. You'll feel this regenerating and so it will be a conscious awareness that you can certainly feel your brain. And so as we begin to nurture our energetic system and restore our body, what you'll find is that the perceptual reality that you see each day begins to expand. And so instead of just looking at your life through like a tunnel like this and just seeing parts of it as you look around, that will begin to expand and a bigger picture is therefore visible to us as we get more energy into the brain. It's a very simple thing but through that greater or broader awareness we are able to comprehend and understand our reality more greatly so that ultimately means more fulfilling and connected relationships and it means a more successful performance in our professional life which I'm sure is important to everyone so once again if you'd like to hear more then you know what to do and I look forward to uh, communicating and connecting with you in the near future Thank <laughs> you.